Yeah, of course, mate, yeah. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Anthony, um, on the VIP YouTube channel. Uh, where are you tonight? Are you still in Liverpool? Have you gone back down to Shane McGuigan's gym? No, I think I'm back in the gym Monday, mate. Um, back down there, Monday, so I've just been training at home. Training at my local gym this week, um, Golden Gloves, the amateur club that I was in. And um, back with Shane Monday, so I'm excited to get back to work. Uh, How someone like you get on, who... You know, who trains so hard? I mean, I know you, 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 you know, you're quite vocal on on Twitter about how hard you train and how much you put in. And and those of us who know you out, you know, a little bit, know know that is that that's true. So, what, what's it been like for you having to ease off a bit? Um, you know what? I've had this whole lockdown, I've trained six days a week, just just one session a day, and I've been training two three times a day. So I've been training once a day. Six days a week. I had like one week off the whole time, and um, it was a bit, a bit boring, a bit, a bit like dull doing the same thing, just hitting the bags, no pad, no sparring. But it's my job, so I can't, I can't take me out of the prize while I'm still a professional fighter. I want to put it all in. I don't want to like be lazy and sit around the house and then set me back three months, go back into camp, and I'm a bit sluggish. It takes me a few months to get fit. I want to just get right back into things. Get a fight in Eddie's garden and then and then push on towards the end of the year for a, a big fight. So um, you, you're back in Shane McGuigan's gym um, next week. Well, where are you up to fight wise? Has Eddie got you slated down for a behind closed doors fight? Yeah, Shane said I'm, 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 he's not going to give me one, so not as confirmed just yet. But I'm, I'm open to fight in like August time, hopefully. Uh, any sort of opponent uh, names yet? Um, obviously, at least one from England, it'll be um, a domestic fight, which is always exciting. And um, no names have been confirmed yet, but hopefully we get a good opponent. How's it going with Shane McGuigan? You know, it must you know that you, you had a couple fights together, but you know, you, I guess you're gelling better now. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a boss fella, mate. He's a really good coach, really respected fella. He's achieved a lot in a short space of time, so it speaks a lot for him. You know, he's only 31, which is unbelievable. What? He's achieved already, so I'm in, I'm in safe hands, it's safe to say. I mean, there's a lot of fights out there for you. In the last, you know, during lockdown, you've been matched more times than anybody else. Uh, we had O'Hara <laughs> Davis, Ammo Williams. What's happening with those two? <laughs> I know, mate, it's funny. You know why? It's always me, mate. They always get involved in trouble with me. I don't know what happens, but because I'm quite vocal on my Twitter, I'm quite a passionate person. If someone starts, I, I won't back down, do you know what I mean? And, um, that O'Hara started on me, and that, that ammo was um, kind of bully sparring partners, which I know is a fight day. When you spar a novice, you, you don't take liberties. It's only a spar, and it's about learning. Don't start beating up a weak opponent who's like, not experienced. So I just called him out for being a bully, and then obviously he started giving me shit again. So this is what it is, isn't it? Is it realistic you could fight either of them? I guess Ammo Williams is more likely because O'Hara's, you know, is a welterweight, and you are a big. 154 pound fighter. Yeah. You know what, though? I, I, I don't know who said they are. If I say something, I mean it. I don't, I don't just make empty threats. So I said I'd, I'd make 150 to fight O'Hara. But um, I'm not sure if Shane would let me do 150. Shane's saying yeah. the same joke. He's saying 154, 152 yeah. maximum. So, like, unless he steps up to like 152, but maybe O'Hara was just talking a good game to get a bit of publicity. I don't know. I don't know. But I was I was serious, and um, Amal Williams is a middleweight. That easy, move up six pounds, and I'll still be massive. I'm middleweight, so that's another realistic fight. Yeah, I think 150 150 pounds. You'll have to listen to Shane there. I think. <laughs> 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 I know. You know what? I, I put him, I put him, put a weight on as well because obviously, just I've been like, living a bit more of a normal life, like having like you know, a little bit of chocolate before bed, little biscuits, like cup, cups of tea and cookies and stuff. I'm just living a bit normal. We're in camp. I go 12 weeks, so I won't eat one bad thing. I drink water, eat free and veg, three meals a day. I'm really, really strict on my diet, so that's why I can make one five four quite comfortable. Whereas me living normal, I ballooned up a lot, which I was surprised at there, but um, it's, it's coming down now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Scott Fitzgerald fight was one the rematch everybody would like to see yeah um, 
you accept that one looks like it's certainly gone for the well for the, in the next year or so now maybe? Yeah, well, I, I'd still hope to fight until the end of the year. I, I don't know what he's up to. I know he's had a few personal problems and stuff, but I'm hoping to fight him like November, December if he's if he's up for it. Like, but it's all like in up in the air, isn't it? Like we was gonna fight July the 18th. That was that was half yeah. like, semi agreed, and then obviously fucking hell, the whole world ended. So. <laughs> it's been set back me but hopefully the fight's there the fight everyone wants it it's a, it's a big payday for Scott he's still got something to prove the first fight was really really close everyone wants to see it so like I'd love to box him again mate because I think I had an off night and I, I want to I want to prove that what do you think when you see that he's had issues lately he's, a, he's always been a bit of a crazy fella he? like on the, on the GB squad um, we were like quite like we was our friends, we were right. Do you know what I mean? We were cool. And like obviously when we were fighting, it got a bit personal as as it can do. I to be fair, I started all the beef. I said a few things to him um at the press conference and he, he went a little bit loopy over it and ended up making him box box really well. He boxed the best he's ever boxed in his life, in my opinion. But I think he has always been a bit of a mad character. Like he he's got friends of my mates and well he was friends of my friends the McCormack who are on Team G B. Oh, yeah. And, and they're, they're, they're all loopy, they're both loopy as well. And they, they said to me, like, that, that's what he's like, he's a bit mad. I, I didn't really know because he was quite quiet on GB, he was quite a quiet lad. Yeah. You touched it earlier on, you know, you get involved in these rows and it leads to a certain public persona that you've got. Um, what do you, you know, why, do, why do you think that you must be, I don't know, you get more stick than most on, on Twitter and social media when people who know, you know, I've known you for a good few, I've known you since pre-WSB and you're a different bloke I think to what you come across not you how you come how people see you on Twitter <laughs> I don't know mate it's, it's well, obviously like, people can't really read a person from a few tweets and stuff and I am quite vocal I am always giving my opinion I'm, all, I'm, not, I'm not shy to say what I think like even my girlfriend now we've got to this day said to me when I met you I thought you would have been a dickhead but you're alright you know what I mean so like whatever whatever, whatever I'm doing on social media I'm doing it wrong but it gets me a lot. It gets me a big following, and half half people love me, half hate me. At least, at least people want to see me fight. That's the main thing, isn't it? Do you do you admit you're a marmite fighter then? Yeah, well, obviously I must be, mate. Because like, no, I thought it's funny as well. Because everyone always says to me, you get a lot of hate, but I don't. I genuinely don't see it because half lot of main people, I don't really see nothing. Like it's funny. Really? People, people say to me, like you were saying to me now, I don't. I don't see nothing. I generally don't see nothing. Like. I think Twitter must have thought of the most or something, or I've, I've blocked them all because it's funny. I, I don't mean see not myself. But it's helped you though, isn't it? I mean, you know, obviously you had your name from the Olympics and the WSB, you was incredible in them, the fights you had in there. Um, so people knew you, but it's helped you along to people who might not have known you from the amateurs, hasn't it? Everyone knows you now. They, they want to tune in to watch you. Some want to watch you win, some want to see you get beat. <laughs> Pat, I mean, you know what? I don't, I don't care. It's, it's about me performing my best. If you, if you love me or hate me, it doesn't really affect my life. As long as I'm okay, my family and friends are okay, that, that's all that matters to me. It's, you can't be everyone's friend, can you? you could, I could be like one of them fighters always in the fence, doesn't really say much, but like you just said, no one knows who they are. They just, they're in the, the background. No one, wants to, no one gives a fuck about them, if I'm being honest. So long as you just sit back and don't really speak up, you've got to have a bit of a personality, I, I think, personally. Obviously, the boxing is the talking, but if you want to speak out and be yourself, you might be loved or hated, but at least people are interested. So, yeah, that, that's, that's what boxing is about. It's about putting bums on seats. If you can't sell out your, your front garden, it doesn't matter how good you are, you won't make much money, will you? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you're looking for that big domestic fight this year, but obviously, you've got to be looking at the world next year. How do you rate the four world champions? You know, Jamel Charlo, Rosario, Julian Williams, and Texas. Well, I'm not sure the unpronounceable Brazilian Texera, is it? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I haven't, I haven't even seen him fight. I think Julian Williams has lost his belt now. I think it's um, him. Rosario beat Williams. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, that Rosario, he's like a rough, rugged fighter. He's not like the most technically gifted fighter, but he's a strong game lad, which I, I am myself, but. I need to like prove myself at the message level. Like I am look past Scott. I'm fair to admit it. I thought it'd be an easy fight. I went, I walked the ring thinking it was to be a walk on the park and then we'll bring on Cheeseman for the bells. That that's more more fuel me, but I've um, I learned a hard lesson that night about not underestimating no one, like being humble, treating them all with respect, which 
I should have respect, respected Scott because he's an accomplished fighter. He, he was Commonwealth gold medalist, ABA champion, undefeated pro. But I thought, going off his previous performances, that he'd be an easy fight because against the likes of um, Craig, was it Craig Morris he boxed and he, he yeah, really scored? Morris, yeah. I was ringside and I thought, oh, you've got, you've got no chance against me kind of thing. But against me, he really boxed, he boxed really well. He boxed a great game plan. He was really fit. He was really durable. He, bo- he, he dug in there and, and he, he boxed really well and he, he deserved to win. So I learned, I learned a lesson that night about going in there with that mindset that it's already won. So now I won't look past no one. Like a wean scoff fight again. I look at myself as the B side. I look at him as the champion and me as the B side. And I'll go to the ring with that mentality where the first fight, I, I generally didn't even think it was a threat. I, w- I would have bet every penny I've got on me winning and I would have, I would have lost it all, wouldn't I? So that's how confident I was. A couple of predictions looking for you now. Who wins Cheeseman Eggington, in your opinion? Um, I think I think Cheeseman. I don't know. Eggington's like a bit of a. He can be a little bit hot and cold. He can perform really, really well on his night, and he can have a few bad nights as he showed. But I think um, I think Cheeseman might be a little bit too clever for him, in my in my opinion. And um, Eggington's had a lot of hard fights. Like when he walks when he walks Liam Smith and Liverpool, I thought that could have been the end of him. And then he come back and had a great win in Italy. So. I respect Sam. He's a really, he's a really tough lad. He works really hard and he's really game. But I think I think Ted might be just a little bit too clever for him. Yeah. And also Joshua Fury. How do you see that going if it takes place next year? No, I've always, I've always been seeing Joshua the whole like the whole time. And like me and Joshua shared the room for years down Sheffield. But I can't like I can't not respect Fury. I mean, it's like, it's a story. But one of the best stories I've ever seen in my life. Like to come back from like twenty eight stone to. To win the world title again, it's like it's unbelievable. It's like a fairy tale, isn't it? So like I, I'm, I'm edging towards Fury as the favourite, but Joshua on his night, mate, he can easily just land one shot. And Joshua's a combination puncher, so if he, if he hits him, Joshua will finish him off. Where wow, those like one punch mentions. Joshua can put, put them together nice, and if he hits Fury, he can get him out of there. But it's a bit of a like Fury point, Joshua KO, and I think I think Fury's the favourite at the minute. But I still would be with Joshua. I still be team Joshua. You said you shared a room there with, with Anthony. I mean, so you would have seen all the controversy around him last week. Uh, you know, yeah. what do you think of that controversy, and what's he like to share a room with? I mean, he was a lovely fella, mate. He was a really, really sound guy. We shared a room, I think, for two years, and um, I mean, he was a lovely fella, mate. Just that pleasant, always positive. We had a laugh. He was a really good guy, mate. And then he got moved up to the podium squad. He progressed a little bit faster than me, and he, he made London. I had to, I had to wait till Rio, but. Mate, he's a really good guy. I can text him now when he texts me back. He's, like, he's never forgot himself. He's still down to earth and still humble. I think, um, obviously, what happened to George Floyd, the whole like, black community got all really hurt. And he was, he was the same. I think he got involved in Red Smith's speech and got, got dragged into it. When Obviously, the comments he made were wrong. You can't say that type of thing, in my opinion, as well. But I think he got, he got misinterpreted. He come across wrong. He was just reading out the statements. But... It is what it is. It's been done now in life. I think he will. I lost a lot of fans there, but he's definitely not a racist. He's definitely not racist. He's he's my friend. I share the room with the guy, and he's he's a really good fella. All right, then. Well, thanks for that. Thanks for joining us tonight, Anthony. That's really kind of you. No problem, mate. I've enjoyed it, mate. Good, good speaking to you, Steve. For all boxing info, news, and latest interviews, amateur and pro across and off, click and subscribe. VIP boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.